1045 the team you're home for New York sports we've been uh, we've been talking a lot about Seattle lately but it's nice to have just a, a genuine good story come out of the university right now <laughs> with, with no no rumors no nonsense no nothing joining us right now is uh, is um, Todd D Snyder with us and Todd I, I I saw the the report that you did with uh, with CW15 and CBS6 and the first thing they said is you don't look like a college professor. How often do you get that, and how annoying has that question become? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got that question a couple times. But look, man, ever since my son was born, the gray hairs are starting to come in. So it's like, you know, as the years go by, I, I hear less and less of that kind of thing. You know, does it get does it get annoying though? It's like it's like, yeah, I know, I, I put the work in. I'm a teacher. I've got a book. <laughs> like, 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 stop, stop judging this book by its cover. You know, it's funny. Uh, sometimes I go to the rap shop at Siena, and they don't want to give me my faculty discount. Not, you know, they think I'm a well dressed <laughs> student, like a business student or something. <laughs> yeah, so that happens. Well, we have this fantastic book that you've worked on twelve rounds in Lowe's gym, and we're going to get into Lowe is actually your father, the nickname for your father. Take us through the process of assembling this book and what it went into about what readers can read in this upcoming book. Yeah. Um, my father, his name is Mike Lowe Snyder. Lowe is his nickname around town. Uh, he was a really good high school football player and they got the nickname cause he would hit the holes low. He was a short guy like me. And, uh, he was also an amateur boxer. And, uh, the rumor was, you know, when he fought, he, he stayed low to the ground, kind of that Joe Frazier kind of style. So, you know, I grew up, I was Lowe's kid. Uh, the book itself is about his, uh, series of makeshift boxing gyms that he had in West Virginia. That's the state I grew up in. Uh, we're talking about the lower levels of boxing. I mean, okay. Our first boxing gym was located in the back of my mother's beauty shop. Wow. So, you know, imagine that. You got a makeshift boxing gym that smells like Paul Mitchell hair products. Smells like <laughs> uh, and we also had a gym in the back of a Baptist church at a community center. They had bought a building that used to be a bar. And uh, they put, you know, my father's gym in the upstairs. It's a community outreach project. So the book itself is about the stories of the fighters in that boxing gym and, of course, my relationship to my father uh, growing up in a pretty tough part of Appalachia, cold country. Todd Snyder with us right now. Uh, he professor at Siena and now the new book, as Gosh just said, 12 rounds in Lowe's gym. You, so what, what was it like to box with your father and then walk through the door and your mom, you know, is touching up people's hair and stuff. Like, like was mom into you boxing or was mom against it? No, it's funny. Uh, my mother, when she married my father, she sort of married into a boxing family. So at one point, my mother was even like scoring fights, like amateur fights. So, you know, she had the beauty shop. The front was like women with curlers in their hair and better homes and gardens magazines. In the back, it was like these tattooed coal miners learn how to box with my father. But she married into that. So uh, she was at the fights every Saturday, too. She supported the kids. And, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that type of thing, although it was a sort of a strange gender dynamic growing up where, you know, I, I grew up a latchkey kid with my mom in front of the beauty shop at night down there with the tough guys with my dad. So. That's pretty that's, an interesting that's be, childhood. You know? Yeah, that's got to be at least good for balance. Yeah, for sure. I guess so. Yeah, I can talk to old ladies and uh, street guys, too. I can do a little bit of both. I can get along with anybody. The dynamic's crazy because you're a boxer growing up, but then you become an English teacher. Where was that passion for English? Did it start even when you were learning to box? You know, it's funny. Uh, that's sort of one of the tensions in the book. When my dad's gym really took off and he really had some successful amateur and pro-level fighters is the year I went off to college. Now, I was the first in my family to do that. I was a first-generation college student. And the reason I went to college is because my father, he was a talented football player, and he was offered a partial scholarship at a school in Appalachia. And he turned down that scholarship to go work in the mines with his father. So I went to college sort of out of guilt. Like, you know, my father didn't have the opportunity. So I thought, well, I should. So I go off to college, and the gym really picks up. He starts getting notoriety as a trainer, and the, and the fighters are winning state championships. And here I am off in college in this sort of a strange universe that I didn't feel like I belonged in. Uh, and I'd always wanted to be a writer ever since I was a kid. And, you know, writing was not the most manly or pragmatic profession in my hometown. Uh, you know, I grew up in an extractive industry town where coal mining and logging is what all the men did. This hard sort of manual labor stuff. Uh, so part of the tension in the book is me having to, you know, think about those identity conflicts of being off in college when my dad is doing this uh, this boxing thing back in my hometown. Todd Snyder, 12 Rounds in Lowe's Gym is the book. And, and, and Todd, who who was giving you like the pressure about writing? Was that all internal? Or was did dad go, hey, man, throw hands for a living. You're good at it or anything like that. You know, it's funny. My father always supported whatever I wanted to do in life. But 
he, the only thing he ever really pushed on me was I needed to go to college and get an education. My father respected people with educations way more than he respected tough guys. So I knew I had to go to college or I was supposed to go to college. Now, he didn't know what to tell me to do. He didn't have, you know, the, maybe the best advice as far as like navigating the maze that is academia. But I was pretty much going to have to go to college or fight him, so I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> and even when you're at college, although you're fighting with that struggle between this new environment, right. you developed a love for where you went to school, which was Marshall. Yeah. And that love, not just for the school itself, but later on that you had one of your children influenced by your time at Marshall. Yeah, for sure. You know, my wife and I, my wife Stephanie and I fell in love and we, we got together when I was at Marshall University. And uh, in some ways, I really found myself there. I found myself as a writer, uh, found a, a sort of a different identity than uh, growing up in the environment I grew up in back in West Virginia. So Marshall University is sort of like my second home. I love Huntington, West Virginia. And when we had our first child four years ago, we named him Huntington. So, you know, <laughs> Very cool. It was the best I could do for the son of a college professor. I gave him an Appalachian namesake. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, when I, when I look at when I look at the book, it's it, the the cover that it's your dad's hand. Yeah, it's, and that's, that's his hand for real. And that's you can just see that that that's a hand that, that's that's done some damage and done some work. No doubt, it's a coal miner's hand. Right, mm-hmm. like, like how important was it for you to kind of immortalize like that that piece of your dad on the cover of the book? Yeah, one of the things I write about in the book is sort of this idea of the working hands of society, and I play around with the the theme of hands because it's a boxing book in some ways. Uh, my wife actually shot the cover photo. Uh, that's my dad's hand on the cover of the book. And hands were sort of a big theme in the book, what hands can do. You know, I'm a writer. I use my hands in a different kind of way. Right. But I'm working with my hands still the same. So uh, we wanted, we knew we wanted that to be the cover of the book. And West Virginia University, who published it, was nice enough to let us have a little creative control of the cover, which a lot of times authors don't have. So. Shout out to WVU for giving me that opportunity. Well, that's your rival, though, at Marshall, though. Hang on. That's, that's a little straight. Mountaineers versus Thundering Herd. You were okay with it, though, for the book. Now, I got to be honest, man. I grew up hating w, WVU. I ain't gonna, <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. I'm a, I'm a Marshall fan for sure. You know, Randy Moss, Chad Pennington, Byron Leftwich, that's my people. But uh, WVU did publish the book, so, you know, I can't hate too much. <laughs> uh, it's all love. I appreciate it. Um, now, how, how is, is Dad still with us? Yeah, he's still around, yeah. What does he think of the book? He's very proud of it. Uh, you know, it's a very intimate book, and I write about some good times. You know, my dad won the Jefferson Award for Community Service in the state of West Virginia, which if you don't know what the Jefferson Award is, that's like the Pulitzer Prize of Community Service. Wow. That's so he awesome. did a lot of great community outreach to the gym. So I think it brought back a lot of good memories, and then it brought back some tough times, too. You know, I write about some tough times in our family, and... uh I think it was a roller coaster. I think he laughed and cried, and you know, but he was proud of it. You know, and I interviewed my dad 24 times when I was writing this book. It took me three years. So he knew what was going to be in there. You know, we, you know, based on the interviews, based on the conversations we had, he had a good sense of what it was going to be like. No secrets. He knew what was going to hit the pages. Nah, okay. He knew, you know, I didn't let him read it until it, com- until it came out because as a writer, you can't have somebody looking over your shoulder. Right. You got to have. Freedom. You got enough editors. You don't right, need another right. one. Yeah. Right. You got those people you're picking at your words and everything. But we did so many interviews that I think, you know, he, he essentially knew every chapter before he read it because he knew what I was talking about. I think some people are just curious now to find out how you made the shift from West Virginia and then your time at Marshall to now here in the Capital District as a professor at Siena. Yeah, I graduated from Marshall University with my undergrad and my master's degree. And then I graduated from Ohio University with my Ph.D. And when it came time to hit the job market, you know, as a professor, it's a national job market. And there were 45 jobs in the country the year I was on the market in, in my field of study. That's not a lot. Nah, so I applied to all 45 of them. <laughs> and, you know, good looking out. I ended up in New York. This was a great place to be. We knew a little bit about Siena College. Yeah, you know, they had busted my bracket a couple times. So I was happy <laughs> to be for that. up here in Albany, and I was happy to be with Siena. And they've, they've let me be myself. They've let me teach the kind of courses I want to teach. It's been, uh, it's been a great seven years up here. I, I'm not going anywhere. Todd Snyder with us. The book is 12 Rounds and Lowe's Gym. How's the book doing so far? The book is doing great, man. We have, uh, you know, doing well on Amazon. We've been kind of touring the West Virginia and Ohio. We were in Pittsburgh last weekend doing readings and book signings. Uh, it's been a lot of love up here in the Capital District, too. It's been great. 
I feel That's like awesome. there, yeah, I feel like there's some people that are like are 16 to 18 and might be deciding to go to college, and they just are listening to this interview and thinking, all right, I want to take a class with Professor Todd Snyder right now. <laughs> like, take us into the classroom. What's it like being a student with one of your classes at Siena? You know, I, they let me be creative at Siena, and, and I, I'm blessed uh, that they give me so much creativity. Uh, the course I'm kind of known for, you know, I do an Appalachian identity course, but the one I'm really known for at Siena is my hip hop class. Hip hop was my first love, even before boxing. So I teach a class called the Rhetorics of Hip Hop Culture, and uh, it was really popular when I first started teaching it up here because a lot of our students come from New York City area. And uh, the Damietta Cross Cultural Center, which I have to give them a shout out, put up some money so we could do a hip hop week at Siena. So the first year, I was the keynote. It was nothing fancy, but we had a different event every night of the week that highlighted the different elements of hip hop culture. We looked at you know graffiti artists, b boys, local MCs. And that grew in popularity, and now we bring in big name rappers uh, to be the keynote speaker every every year. So we've had Chuck D from Public Enemy. Wow! Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had Master Killer from the Wu Tang Clan was in my class. Wow! Uh, we've had Shy Rock, uh, the first female MC. So we've had you know Grandmaster Flash. We've had some big name people come, and they uh, have dinner with my students and talk about the history of hip hop. It's a blessing to get to do it, and you know, uh, it's a lot of fun. We have more fun than anything. Professor Todd Snyder with us. The, again, the book, uh, 12 Rounds in Lowe's Gym. And do you ever get into like, rap nowadays isn't as good as it was? Because that's, I mean, that's what I find myself. Like my kids starting to listen to some some hip hop right, now. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, sweetie, I'm sorry. It's just not where it was anymore. Everybody's auto-tuned. It's the same beat in every song. You know, I got to suppress the urge to sound like the old man. Right? I feel like a grandpa in class every now and then. <laughs> because there are a lot of artists today that I don't really dig. But if I was a young person, I probably would. Right. I grew up, you know, I had Tupac. I had Biggie. Right. Had Nas and Jay-Z when they were first on fire. Uh, it's hard for me to get excited about Fetty Wap. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, I feel like, but I, look, feel like I, I, I want to come guy. to the class now. And yes, wanna, me too. I want to, like, Grandpa LeVac comes in and just complains about new rap. Nah, I, I'm not going front. I do sound like a grandpa sometimes. I'm like, back in my day, we had right? Tupac, you know. Yeah. Uh, Let me tell you about the beginning of the parental advisory. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right, I'm right. In. But it's funny because now hip hop is getting old. So like w- my students one day called Jay Z a dad rapper, and I'm like, oh. "How you gonna call Jay Z a dad rapper?" <laughs> but you know what can I say? You know it's a different different generation. We have fun with it though. But yeah, I definitely have some grandpa moments in there. They make me feel old. My students the other day were like, "We weren't born when Tupac was alive." I'm like, man, that made me feel old. Right, <laughs> right. Oh my, I'm like, I'm right, a, right. I remember, I remember when this this pup Jay Z hit the rap scene. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, Todd Snyder with us, twelve rounds in Lowe's gym. Is this the first of many books? Is this just something you had to get out on paper? No, nah, it's actually my second book. Uh, oh, my first right. book was called The Rhetoric of Appalachian Identity, and I'll be honest with you, it was much more of an academic book. It was full of jargon. It was more specific to my field of study. Uh, this book is a, is a sort of a nonfiction memoir, creative nonfiction kind of piece. But I feel like the genie's out of the bottle now, so I want to write different genres and do different things. Uh, I have another book I just finished while, uh, on my sabbatical that a publisher's looking at right now, so fingers crossed, you know, it'll do well. Very nice. Can you man. give us a topic about what it is? Yeah, it's called Small Town Nervous Breakdown. It's fiction, so uh, it's, it's set in a fictional Appalachian town in West Virginia. Semi autobiographical, I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Todd Snyder yeah. again. The book, 12 Rounds in Lowe's Gym. Look for it. It's, um, I, I've, I've literally just cracked the cover. Like, I, you know, so yeah. I have, a, I can't, I can't get into, I, I just hearing you talk about it makes me want to read it more, but I can't, I can't even give you an honest uh, critique at this moment, but I'm sure I'm going to love it from just the sound of the, the passion and the realism that's in there, man. You know, I think, I think if you're a fight fan, uh, you're going to dig the book, but really it's more, it's about fathers and sons. It's about what it means to grow up in a place and be impacted by that place. And no matter where you go, a little bit of you is sort of uh, a part of that place. And, you know, that's reflected in the way you see the world and the way you talk and think and believe. Uh, so I don't think you have to even be a fight fan to dig the book. I think it's about fathers and sons and, and community. Amazon, all different spots where you could find books and where the like, best way to find it. Yeah, Barnes & Noble, yeah. Amazon, wherever you buy books online, it'll be available. And you know, we're trying to get in all the local bookstores in the Capital District, too. So.
Well, speaking about getting in places, once the fall semester starts up again, if you see LeVac and I in the back row of one of your hip-hop classes, just don't kick us out. We hey, just want to hang out. Hey, audit the class, nah, man. I've been, a, <laughs> I've been a fan of the show for a long time. You don't. You just need to just send me a text. You can come through. Yes. Yeah. All right. And that'll be what I'll put down for when I try to get my honorary doctorate again. I'll just... Yeah, right. look, I, took, I, I took a class. Look it, look it. I got you, man. I got you. And, then, and y'all bring me next time you're at the Super Bowl. So I'm you know, the, you know, Yes. I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Todd Snyder, again, one more time. 12 rounds and Lowe's Gym. Check it out. Uh, uh, boxing and manhood in Appalachia, and uh, we just appreciate you making time for us. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Big fan of the show. I appreciate it.